Hello Eurovision friends, thank you so much for coming to my channel Eurovision Histories. I hope you had a good start into 2024. Happy New Year to all of you. Today I want to talk about the top 100 and react to the top 100 of the top 250 which were revealed by songfestival.be as per usual on New Year's Eve and it's quite an interesting tradition that has been going on for a long time now and I wanted to tell you my opinion about the top 100. I kind of tried not to see what the results are. I think I might have had a glimpse of the winner uh, on Twitter because it's kind of unavoidable unfortunately but otherwise I haven't seen these results and I want to go through them with you. So in 100th position I'm not doing 250 because the video would just be way too long. Um, in 100th position we have Ovra Hasa with Hai, the Israeli entry at the German Eurovision hosted in Munich and it's a song about being alive and screaming out to the world that you're still alive. Quite a cool uh, choice for Israel to have at, in a contest hosted in Germany. So I'm quite happy for this to be number 100. Then in 99th position, we have Doris Dragovic with Maria Magdalena. I love, love, love this entry. It's so fun and cool and catchy. I have it in my energy playlist that I listen to when I need to be energetic, for example, at a workout. And uh, really happy for her as well that she's in the top 100. Then we have Gustav from this year with Because of You, also a song that has uh, really kind of increased in my personal ranking over the year and the performance just uh, sealed it for me that this is a really good performance and entry from Belgium. So I'm really happy for him that he's in the top 100 as well. We will see that as per usual, this is quite heavy with songs from this year, from last year and the last couple of years, because that's just the, these are just the songs that are still in the mind of the fans voting for this. And so, yeah, I, it doesn't surprise me, but I think more Eurovision fans should listen to the older songs as well. So we have a few more older songs as well in the top 100. Then we have Gina G, the first 90s song, Ooh Ah, Just A Little Bit. I'm not a big fan of this, but I know that a lot of fans love it, so it makes sense that it is in uh, the top 100. Then <laughs> Alvan NIS with Fulen. If you've seen my channel and my ranking of 2022, you know that I do not like this song at all. Um, I know that a lot of people think that this is a very good entry and it's kind of a fan favorite. So it makes sense that it is in the top 100. But for me, it's not my kind of thing. I actually ranked it last in my ranking of the final of 2022. Then another one I'm not too keen about, Iveta Mukuchian with Love Wave. It's an okay entry, cool performance, but yeah, it doesn't really float my boat, to be honest. Then... If you've followed this channel, you know that I've been a Celine Dion fan before I was a Eurovision fan. I This isn't one of my favorite songs by Celine Dion, but it is a song that has grown on me a lot recently and over the last couple of years. I like the oomph and the energy that goes with it. And of course, she has an amazing vocal performance. So this is kind of deserved that this is in the top uh, 100. By the way, I'm going to try to take this out a bit yeah so you can also see where it was last year it was outside of the top 100 last year so quite happy for Celine that now she's inside of the top 100 then we have attention Ulrike this is from 2020 obviously didn't get to be performed on a Eurovision stage because the contest was cancelled and it has gone down quite a bit uh, since then this is another one where I don't really have a connection with this song, unfortunately, even though I do like power ballads usually. Common Linux 92, love this song and the performance. It's so classy and timeless and amazing. And this will be a good song in 30 years and 40 years and people will love it. This, I think this is one of the only songs from the 60s, unfortunately, in this top. Poupée de Cire, Poupée de Son by France Gall, obviously a classic and an evergreen. So I'm happy that it's in there, even though the lyrics, as you might know, if you've seen my video on 1965, are a bit problematic, but the song itself and the performance are great. Then May Muller, I wrote a song. Yeah, I don't think this should be in the top 100, but good for her. And again, we have a bit of a skewed result for this year and the last year. 
which is to be expected. Then we have Ruslana Wild Dances, kind of the same like last year, quite happy for her as well. Then Sala Grail and Kasper Santl with Sebi. This is another one that I don't really get. I can see how people might like it, but it's not my kind of thing. We are Domi with Lights Off. Again, <laughs> I'm kind of repeating myself, but there are more songs that I like coming, uh, I think, I hope, in the higher positions. Uh, yeah, it's an okay song, but yeah. Secret Combination I kind of find very annoying and I don't really like it. It's very Americanized too. And coming after a string of Greek entries that had a Greek element to them, this was a bit underwhelming to me back then in 2008. But I kind of understand why it's in the top 100. If Love Was a Crime, Polygenova, amazing song, great song. Love it, very catchy. I don't like the outfit at all, but otherwise very much deserved. Wow, okay, Anne-Marie David, Tu te reconnaîtra, did not expect this to be in the top 100, but it was last year as well. I didn't follow it last year, so that might give you, uh, that might be why I'm a bit surprised. I hope that Vike Leandros is above her then, because I much prefer Après toi to Tu te reconnaîtra, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, don't really understand this, to be honest, but okay. Then, Non mi avete fatto niente. This is a song that has grown on me a lot on the night in 2018. I didn't quite understand why it was so high, but now I have really taken a liking to it. I really, really like it. Andromache Ella. I can't really remember the song, which is not a good sign. So yeah, I don't know why it's in the top 100. Mokedades Eres 2 is one of my all-time favorites. An amazing song, cool melody, great lyrics. Very simple in a way, but also very beautiful and elegant. So really happy for them. Ivi Adamu La La Love. This is not my kind of song. Really not happy, but I kind of expected it to be in the top 100. Hadise Dum Tek Tek, uh, a Turkish song, quite cool. Very, it's almost always in these most watched videos because it's a good performance. And I think she's very famous in Turkey and Belgium as well. So yeah, 79th position, happy for her. Then we have Ruth Lorenzo dancing in the rain. This has gone down quite a bit. I, okay, so last year Chanel won the top 250 and it was a bit controversial because people said that lots of Spanish fans that wanted to right the wrong of Chanel not winning Eurovision flooded the voting and some other Spanish songs also were quite high. So this is an indication, early indication that maybe Chanel will not win that this year because Ruth Lorenzo has dropped 55 positions, which is quite a bit. Uh, because the fans that voted for Chanel also voted for her. Um, yeah, but it's a good song, good vocal performance, but probably not a top 100 song for me personally. Margaret Berger, I Feed You My Love, 77th. I don't get the song either so much. It's cool and distant and very Nordic in that sense, but I could never connect to it. Francesco Gabani, Occidentalis Karma. Now, the Italian entries are usually my favorite or among my favorites, and this one is not one of those. I really hope that better songs come because it's, it's becoming a bit of a negative video. Sorry about that. But yeah, Oxygen Kai's Karma, not really my cup of tea. Tears Getting Sober, same th thing. Sorry, Victoria, but it's just a bit too sad for me. I don't like that. Celebrate, I don't understand why this is here. Maybe there's lots of Croatian fans voting for LED3. I hope they're coming up later on. But yeah, Dadia, I mean, the trick is nice, the dress trick, but the song itself is kind of annoying to me. Sorry. Then we have A Monster Like Me. Cool, understated performance, very mystic and mysterious. I like that. So well done, Norway, 73rd position. This is my favorite song. From Turkey, Turkey, I think, Sebim Parker and Group Ethnic with Dinle. It's so catchy, so cool, has traditional elements, modern elements. It's one of my favorite songs in the 90s as well, so I'm very happy that it's in the top 100. Urban Symphony Rendayat, again, so mysterious. The Estonian adds a lot to the song and performance. Uh, the her and the charisma she oozes is just amazing. So very happy for her as well. 
Lena Satellite is this the only German song that made it to the top 100 because I thought Lena would be higher up uh yeah 70th kind of not in love as much in love with this song as I was before but it's still you know the song that made my country win so I have to like it kind of Alika Bridges from this year uh, not my cup of tea, but I'm happy for her. Then Répond des Mois 2020, John's Tears. Never got to be performed on a Eurovision stage, but it is a good song and it is a better song than Tout l'Univers that he performed a year after. Hadi Matahari, Leila. I really love this song so much. Um, yeah, just I'm in love with this song. And these kinds of Balkan ballads are really my kind of thing. This is not my favorite Balkan ballad. I hope the other ones are coming up uh, in a minute. But I I just hope that we get a few more of these at some point. Voyager Promise from this year. Yeah, not too much to say about that. Then AWS. Um, the lead singer unfortunately passed away a few years ago. I'm very sad about that, but that makes me more... Uh, even happier that they are in the top 100 and they've actually increased 30 positions. So rock songs seem to be doing quite well with, uh, as you can see, Australia and also AWS. Then we have Monica Liu going down a bit. This is, of course, from 2022. And I think that a lot of songs from 2022 will be going down a bit because this bias that people have towards the newest songs is fading away a bit. Cool performance, nice performance, but it's not kind of my kind of thing. Now we have a winner, Kalush Orchestra, Stefania, only in 63rd position, even though it won. This kind of shows you the kind of controversial win it was, I guess. But I think it is a cool song, great song, combines so many different elements. So I'm really happy for them. This is something for me. I love this song, the ballad, the DVD, Mahmoud and Blanco. Usually I love the Italian entries and this is really one of my favorites. The way they sing to each other and with each other is just amazing. Of course, the performance wasn't that great, especially the vocal performance, but still I like this song quite a lot. Here's another Balkan ballad that I like a lot, <laughs> Shelko Joksimovic, even though his other song I like even more. I hope it's in the top uh, higher up than Lane Moye, but this is really beautiful really cool choice to start it off with an instrumental that lasts almost a minute i think and then the beautiful lyrics and the serbian and it's all just wonderful i love it and in my personal ranking it would be much higher actually then we have elena Zangrinu with el diablo yeah kind of you can see going down from 37 to 60 so also fading away the bias and I think that next year it might not be in the top 100. My Sister's Crown, very much deserved, I think. This is one of my favorites from this year. 59th position for them. And then a really cool song from the nine, uh, from 1995. Also going down, you can see the Spanish buyers going down a bit, I guess. Annabel Conde, Vuelve Conmigo. A power ballad, very catchy chorus. Really cool. Love it. Setup RNR also an amazing when i'd won i didn't get it but after i bought the single in 2003 and i really really loved it and it became one of my favorite songs actually this might be my favorite song from turkey not uh dinle but yeah happy for her that she's in the top getting closer to the top 50 aminata love injected the song itself doesn't really convince me but the performance was so cool and effortless that i get that it is here then we have Luke Black with Sama Mises Bava. When it was revealed, I didn't like it. When it won, I kind of understood why it won and I liked it. And then when Eurovision Week came around, it just got a bit annoying to me in some parts. But happy for him that he's quite high in this 55th. I think Let 3 will be even above him. Then we have Dadi Friert and Gang Namach Nit, Think About Things. So the 2020 song really great i think it might have won in 2020 and i'm happy for them then lazara evidamment 53rd i think this is a bit of the current year bias happening but it's still a good song sergey lazarev you are the only one will this be the only russian song in this top good song good performance yeah manga we could be the same 
I think this should have probably won instead of Germany in 2010, even though, of course, I'm very happy that Germany won. But really cool performance, rock song. This would have been a great winner for Eurovision, but uh, happy for them. And now we are entering the top 50. Dami Im, Sound of Silent, my favorite song from Australia. Really cool and deserved. 49th, Undo by Sana Nielsen. If you hear that I'm a Eurovision fan and a Celine Dion fan, you should think that I love this, but I kind of don't. It's a bit too slick and yeah, I don't really have the rawness that I need in a ballad to really like it, but good for her that she's in the top 50. Then we have Antique, Die For You, really good entry in 2001, probably should have won that year instead of Estonia. Very catchy, cool, and Helena Paporisu obviously is, yeah, a great, great singer and performer. Then Only Teardrops by Emily DeForest. Yeah, good one, one deservedly that year, but it's not a song that I'm in love with, actively in love with, let's say. Amanda Tenford, Die Together. This is a fan favorite, I know that. I personally don't like this so much, but good for her. Brunette, Future Lover. Really liked this song before she performed it. I liked it at Eurovision, but it kind of got lost in the field with the dance break and everything. Maybe it was a bit too much, but overall it's a good song and I think it deserves to be in the top 100. Conchita Wurst with Rise Like a Phoenix, a modern classic of Eurovision. Just such an elegant performance and very much deserved to be in this, I thought it would be higher, actually, because I think a lot of fans love this very much. And this, wow, this is a bit of a shocker. ABBA only in 43rd position. They were 22nd last year. Usually they lead a lot of tops, but this obviously is the fans voting. They have the more modern songs and the newer songs in their head while voting. Lots of fan groups also in the vote. And so ABBA kind of gets lost in the noise a bit, I guess. But I think it should be much, much higher because Waterloo is obviously a big classic. Goodbye to Yesterday. I really love that song, this performance. Obviously, the crying she did every single time, but it kind of gets me every time. Really impressive staging as well with not a lot of things happening, but still very impactful. And so it deserves to be in the top 50 here. Then we have Sam Ryder with Spaceman. Uh, he started the UK Renaissance that is happening now with Oli Alexander representing the UK this year. So he deserves all the praise he can get. But you can see he went down from 14th to 41st. So it's not the kind of song I think that will become a classic in the long run. But uh, yeah, he started the UK Renaissance and for that we should be eternally grateful to him. Then we have Mon Samalov with Heroes. Good song, catchy song, but not one of my favorites. Salvador Sobral, Ama Pelos Deutsch. Um, this should be the kind of thing that I really, really like. It's uh, subdued, it's calm, it's acoustic. He puts a lot of feeling into it. But maybe the things he said on that during that year um, about fast food music and all of that kind of disrespect him, his competitors, disrespecting his competitors. I didn't really like, and maybe that impacted my view. <laughs> Verka Seduczka, 2007. I really, really prayed for Molitva to win because I thought Eurovision would be completely disrespected if this won right after Lordi. But today I can see why this is such a great, wonderful song. Amazing. Lasha Tumbai. Uh, just a great song for parties as well and a real Eurovision classic. And she is part of the Eurovision furniture. I don't know if you can say that in English, but in German you can. So uh, yeah, happy for her that she's She's in 38th position, but I do hope that Maria Serifu, which is above her actually in this. Then we have Lordi, Art Rock Hallelujah, another classic, another iconic win that I hated uh, at the time, but now I can very much appreciate. Beth, she was eighth last year, which was crazy. And you can see again, Spanish songs going down quite a bit. Now she's in 36th position. Good song, but yeah. Nothing to write home about for me. Blanche, City Lights, going down a bit, 12 positions. 
great song. I love her vulnerability. Sometimes it felt a bit like she was scared of being there, but overall it's, it's deserved that it's in 35th position. This surprises me a little bit. Uh, Maro Saudade Saudade at 34th position. Great, understated, beautiful performance, but I didn't think that this was a fan favorite actually, but good for her. Then we have Pastora Soler. Love this song. This very dramatic vocal performance is what Eurovision fans live for. I live for it. And so I completely understand that this is so high, but it has gone down again. You see a Spanish song dropping quite a bit from 11th to 33rd position. Then we have Luik Note, Rhythm Inside, cool, great position, um, performance, sorry. And he definitely deserves to be in here as well. Oh, Aja, Sudden Lights. This is, makes me very, very happy because I really wanted them to qualify from the semi final. And this is, I mean, this doesn't mean really anything, but. Still very happy that they get the recognition that they very much deserve, I think. I think this would have qualified from the second semi-final without a problem. And so I'm very happy there in 31st position. Then we have Il Volo, Grande Amore, trying to come back to Eurovision this year. Um, another song that I didn't quite get on the night, but watching the performance more and more, the drama and the amazing vocals just get me now. And I really, really like it. So I think this should have won in 2015 instead of Mons, actually. But yeah, happy that they're in 30th position. And I already see another favorite of mine, Tia and Selena. I love them so much. They are such big Eurovision fans and they just deserve everything that they have achieved. And I'm very happy that they are in the top 30. We're now in the top 30 already. Blind Channel, Dark Side. This is not my kind of music, but still happy that they're there and I do understand. But going up again, I think rock songs are doing quite well this year, it seems like. Uh, we had Voyager, we had uh, the Hungarian song as well, this one. So quite interested to see how Moniskin will do in the end. Noah Kirel, Unicorn. If you've seen my channel, you know that I don't really like the song that much because it seems like it's meshed together a lot of things that try to win Eurovision. Obviously it worked because it came third, but it's not one of my favorites. But I kind of expected it to be to do well on the top 250. Then we have Estine, the deep the this surprises me a little bit. I didn't know this was such a big fan favorite going down a little bit, but just a little bit. And oh, I can obviously very happy about this. Molitva by Maria Serifu, which one of my favorite songs ever. Definitely deserves to be this high and it actually increased from last year, which is really cool. And it, this would have gotten my eight points or 10 points, I think. Secret Garden Nocturne. Um, I'm so wow, very happy that a instrumental song is so high on this list. Um, beautiful song, beautiful arrangement and everything definitely deserved to win. And I'm kind of surprised that this is above ABBA, actually, thinking about it now. And where is Vicky Leandros? Will she be in the top 25 if Corina Mess is in it? Why is Vicky Leandros not here? I don't know. And we have Marco Mengoni, Due Vite. From 2023 anymore but still this deserves to be here a hundred percent. Mahmoud and Saldi, this is such a fresh, sorry, such a fresh, interesting, cool song, catchy, different, feels like something completely new that we hadn't heard at Eurovision. So this deserves to be there. I really, really love him and the song, really cool. My number one by Helena Paparizu, not one of my favorites. I do understand why it won. It was a great performance, but I prefer actually Antique and Die For You to this one, but cool. Constructa, another one of my favorites, my favorite from 2022. So happy that she's returning this year. I can't wait to see what she has uh, prepared for us. And this deserves to be in the top 20, is it? Yeah. It just deserves to be here in the top 20. Then we have Tout l'univers by John's Tears. Again, a bit of bias that this got to be performed on the Eurovision stage and Repond des Mois didn't, because I do think that Repond des Mois is a better song than Tout l'univers, but still happy for him that he has two songs in the top two, in the top 100, actually. Alexander Rybak. 
it's I understand that this is a big, big favorite with a lot of fans, but I have kind of pulled to it a little bit. The performance doesn't seem as impressive anymore to me watching it now, but yeah, I get that it's here. Then Jamala 1944, such an emotional performance when this tree comes up behind her and the scream comes out of her, all the pain and all the suffering that she sings about and now with everything going on it of course has taken on a new meaning and so it deserves to be this high and above the other two uh, ukrainian winners so i'm really happy that it's in the 17th position then alessandra queen of kings quite high 16th position still no vicky leandros i don't understand that um but yeah good song cool song and kind of expected that it's this high wow then we have Hatari Hatrif Munsigra, and again a rock song going up quite a bit. So there seem to be a lot of rock fans voting. And this, but I kind of don't understand why it's this high. I don't know. Yeah. But good for them, good for Iceland. And it's, of course, an iconic and really cool performance that I like to watch again and again. I don't listen to the song, to be honest, but I do watch the performance because it's just cool. Kano Spirit in the Sky, I didn't get this at all in 2019, but now I kind of understand why people like it. It's camp, cheesy fun, and that's what Eurovision has to have as well, apart from other cool songs and good songs and high quality songs. Something like this, I don't, I'm not saying this isn't high quality, but yeah, it's not one of my favorite songs, but I know that it's a fan favorite, so I'm not surprised that it's here. I am, wow. Cool for Diodato. Is this the highest 2020 song? Probably. So 13th, Fire do More. Beautiful, beautiful song. Right, exactly right in the moment it was released. And it's such a pity that it didn't get to compete at Eurovision because I am almost certain that this would have won most probably. Yeah. I'm still, I still haven't done my 2020 video. Sorry about that. But I think that this might have been our winner. Arcade, what can I say? Beautiful, amazing song, so catchy. I've heard it a few times over this weekend even. So it's still going around and being played by radio stations. Just a great song for Eurovision as well that this did so well. Joker out, Carpe Diem, okay. So this top is sometimes very much influenced by fan groups, as you can see here, I think, because Joker Out have a lot of very devoted fans and I'm very happy for them. And maybe some Caddia fans also voted for them. Um, and this being so high kind of makes me think that Caddia might have done it and won the top 100, top 250. Blanca Paloma, you know what I think about this song. I don't really... Uh, I can't really connect to it, but I know that a lot of people are very passionate about it. And now this being 10th kind of makes me think that Chanel might be very high up again, but we shall see. And we have Barbara Pravi, voila, great song, uh, excellent performance, but I wouldn't have put it in the top 10, but I know that a lot of fans like it very, very much. As do they do uh, Fuego with Eleni Fureira, in 2018, I was quite sure that this would win, actually, because it kind of combines everything that Eurovision is, in a way, the drama, the choreography, the hair flipping and everything. But it is still an iconic performance and song, so I'm very happy for her that she's in the top 10 once again. And then I can already see Shum by Goa, my, one of my favorite songs of Eurovision, not my favorite song. Ah, well, I'll, I'll scroll up then, because my two favorite songs of 2021, uh, Moneskin, City, Warni, and Shum uh, by Goa. Love both of them. And yeah, so happy that they're so high up. Moneskin would have been my 12th, because it's my favorite song ever, not just Eurovision in general. So very happy about that. Don't really understand why Cornelia Jacobs is so high. She's in fifth position like the song it was third last year i guess that's why i guess lots of fans love this song i do like it more than other swedish entries especially other swedish ballads but yeah fifth seems a bit high to me so now we're entering the top five well we have entered the top five we still have the two Lorene songs we have Kadia, we have chanel and 
let three i thought that the big fan base might also vote for them quite a bit so i can already see who is fourth so i'm gonna reveal it to you if you haven't already seen it chanel with slow-mo um, she was first last year obviously a bit of a controversy there because lots of fans probably voted for her so she would win but she's still very high and obviously it's an iconic performance great performance everything that a eurovision performance needs is in that performance the song itself is what makes it a bit less uh, perfect to me it's a good song but it's not a perfect song at all then we can already see loreen is third with euphoria from second place last year so that makes me think that tattoo and cha-cha-cha are first and second or second and first um obviously uh, euphoria won every single year until last year since it was released in 2012 or since it won in 2012 and it still is a very iconic song and probably the song i would play to someone if they asked me what is a eurovision song i would probably play euphoria to them even though that's uh, kind of putting under the rock everything that is a bit wrong with eurovision because this is a very good song and a very good performance then in second place i have we have not i have loreen with tattoo and so the winner is Kadia. i kind of saw that on twitter and it's kind of expected he won the mtv um award as well where fans had to vote and loreen kind of had the disadvantage i guess of having two songs but how what a great result for both of them loreen has two songs in the top three in second and third place and carrier has his song cha 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 first as i said kind of expected because it is still a cultural phenomenon in finland he has lots of very devoted fans that voted for him and lots of eurovision fans that liked it and i also voted for cha 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 even though it's not in my top 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 but um i do like the song and it's uh, kind of an iconic performance as well very happy for him very happy for loreen as well so there's no let three that surprises me a little bit no vicky leandros either kind of surprises me as well that corinna mass is above vicky leandros i don't really get that but anyway uh quite happy with the results let me know in the comments what you thought of the top 250 and yeah, let me know what you think of Kedia winning, of Loreen coming second and third, and Chanel in fourth position. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. I'm doing videos on Eurovision all the time, news predictions, ratings of the entries that are coming out. So I'd be really happy if you subscribe. See you then and bye-bye.